Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add and edit variables in a robot program. To get started, clear the 3D world of all components, go to the eCatalog panel, expand models by type, expand robots, scroll down, click Visual Components, and then add a generic articulated robot to the 3D world, which you can see here. I'll now go to the Program tab, and use the jog command to select the robot in the 3D world. And the first type of variable you can use in a robot program are routine variables. So if I go to the program editor panel, you can select a routine, for example, the main routine or a subroutine. I'll now go to the routine properties panel, and you can see here an option for adding a new variable. So the variable can be a boolean, an integer, a real number, or a string. So if I add an integer variable, I can give it a new name and call it counter. Now whenever you set the value of this variable, for example if I change it to 5, and you reset the simulation, you can see the variable resets to its initial value, in this case 0 for the integer. So it's a good practice to set the values of your variables at the start of your program. So if I want, I can go to the program editor panel, and then the main routine, I'll add an assigned variable statement, and notice the tooltip, you can assign a value to a variable. Now as long as the routine variable is in the same routine as the statement that's referencing it, you can use them. So here I can assign the value to a target property called counter, and let's just set it to be 0. And I can also use that routine variable in a while statement or an if statement. So let's add a while statement, and for its condition, I'll say that as long as counter is less than 5, let's execute the loop. So let's create a delay here of 2 seconds. Then after each delay, let's then increment the value of our routine variable called counter. So I'll add an assigned variable statement. The target property is counter. And for its value expression, I'll use the current value of the variable plus 1. So we're incrementing it by 1. And if you want to see the value of the variables change during a simulation, I can select the main routine here in the Program Editor panel. And the Routine Properties panel, you can see right now the value of the counter variable is 0. And once I start the simulation, you can see it increments to 1, 2, 3, 4. And once it reaches 5, the robot program is over, so the simulation stops. And when I reset the simulation, the counter variable is now back at 0. And just to make sure you understand, you cannot use this routine variable in another routine. You have to use it in the main routine. So if I go to the Program Editor panel and add a new sequence, and then add an assigned variable statement, you can try to set counter to whatever value you want. In this case, I'll try to set or assign the value of 0 to the counter variable. But this does not exist in sequence 1. It exists in the main routine. So after the while statement, let's add a call to sequence 1 and see what happens. So in the main routine, it's OK to set the value of counter, because it's the variable in the same routine. But once we get to sequence 1 in the robot program, you can see the simulation stops, and we get an error message in the output panel. So in sequence 1, you're unable to assign a value to counter because that property does not exist. So these routine variables are local. They can only be used in the routine, not in other routines. Let's now reset the simulation. And if you're looking for a global variable in a robot program, one option is to use component properties. So if I select the robot here, in the component properties panel, you have default or general properties. You can reference them by name. You can assign them values. You can also use them in while or if statements. So if I go to the main routine in the program editor panel, Let's now delete this while loop and this call to sequence 1. And we'll edit this assigned variable statement to now change the component property of J1 to be 90. So notice I can just reference it by name. And if I go back to the robot and its component properties, you can see here is that J1 property. And right now it's at 0. If I run the simulation, you can see the robot is now at a different joint configuration and the component properties panel J1 is at 90 degrees. Now don't get confused with joints in a component because 
if I reset the simulation, notice the robot resets to its initial joint values, and J1 is now back at zero. Now, if you want to save the state of a component, for example, if I run the simulation, and I want this to be the new joint configuration of the robot, I can click the setting arrow, then click this button called Save State. Now this will save the state of all components in the 3D world, so be careful with this. But now let's see how this works when you're not editing a property that is a joint in a component. So if I go to the Kinematics property group here, or this tab, you can see you have two properties called Palletizing Mode and Palletizing Normal. So let's try to set these in a robot program or assign them a value. So I'll reset, and then in our main routine, let's edit this first assigned variable statement, make the target property, and to reference a grouped property that's in a tab that's not default or general, you have to first type in the property group name. So it's called kinematics, followed by two colons, and then the property name. So it was palletizing mode, and that was a Boolean value, so I will pass it a true value. And then let's add another assigned variable statement. And this time the target property is in that same group of kinematics. Use two colons, and then type in palletizing normal. And for our value expression, we have to pass a vector. And if you need help writing your expression, you can hold down the control plus space key, or just press it. And you get some options here. So I need to use the vector function, so it's a capital V. And we can see the choice is also listed here in the drop-down menu, so I can click it. And then for the x, let's pass a 0, the y a 0. And the default for the z-axis is negative 1, so let's make it positive to be 1. And then close the parentheses. I press the Enter key, and the expression is good. I got no error message. And if I go back to the robot and select it, and go to its component properties. You can see right now palletizing mode is turned off. It has a false value and palletizing normal. Its z-axis is right now negative one. If I reset and run the simulation, we can see I've now set the palletizing mode property and for palletizing normal, notice its z-axis is now at one. And notice what happens when I reset the simulation. Those properties are still assigned that value. So they were not reset like the joint in the robot. So to fix this, I can either fix it in my main routine or in a subroutine. So let's actually select this first statement in the main routine, hold on the control key, and then click the other statement to add it to my selection. I'll copy them, and then I'll go to sequence one, and then paste them. Now we don't want this end statement here for the counter, so let's delete that. And for palletizing mode, let's actually set it to back to false. And I'll make the program editor panel a bit bigger for you so you can see the expression. For palletizing normal, we want its z-axis to be back to negative 1. There we go. Let's now call sequence 1 in our main routine. So after we set the properties, let's set them back in another subroutine because these component properties are global. You can use them in the main routine and subroutines. So we're calling sequence 1. We select the robot again, reset. We should see palletizing mode and palletizing normal go back to their default values. Run the simulation, and you can see here, palletizing mode is now turned off, and its z-axis is negative one. And if I reset, they still have those values because in our robot program, the last sequence we called, or the last instruction, was to call sequence one and set the component properties to these values. Now, if you want, you can add your own properties to a component and use them in a robot program. For example, if you have access to the modeling tab, you can go there now. And for the robot, you can go to the properties group, click the properties arrow, and add a new component property. So I can add a Boolean property here. Then go to the property task pane and give it a name. You can call it example, and this will be a default or general property, or you can group it. So I can use a group name of robot variables, use two colons, press enter, and here's the group name, here's the property name. Now you can use whatever group name you want to, it does not have to be robot variables. You can see the default value of example right now is false, and if I go to the component graph panel, the properties filter is turned on, so if I scroll down, you can see here's the property, and if I go back to the home tab, I have the robot selected, 
in the component properties panel you can see here is that new group called robot variables and since there is a property that is assigned to this group it is visible and here's the property so if we go to the program tab and then in the program editor panel let's select our main routine and let's actually delete these last two statements then try to set the value of that example property I just added. So select the assigned variable statement, go to the statement properties panel, and the target property, since it's not a general property, have to first reference the group name, which is robot variables, two colons, and then the property name. So we're going to set the example Boolean property to be true. If I select the robot in the component properties panel, you can see right now example is set to false, but if I run the simulation, it's now true. And since this is not a joint, if I reset the simulation, that value is still assigned to the component property. Now, if you don't have access to the modeling tab, you can, of course, create an add-on using Python or .NET API to add component properties. You can also use a script to add properties to a VC program object, which is the program that's executed by the robot. So I can show you how to do that now. I will go to the Modeling tab, and then go to the Behaviors group, click the Behaviors arrow, and add a Python script. And this will open the editor. And I will make the editor, I'm sorry, the text a bit bigger by pressing the Control and plus sign. Let's make that a bit smaller, so I'll press Control and the minus sign. And we don't need these lines of code. Let's start off by getting a handle for the component of this script. So I'll say comp equals get component. And this method is in VC script. So you can see I'm importing everything from VC script. So it'll give me the component object and assign it to this variable. I'll then get a handle for the robot executor. So I'll say robot executor equals comp dot. And if you're using Visual Components 4.04, we now have an autocomplete feature in the Python editor, so you can open this by using the control plus spacebar. And we're using a method called findBehavior, and once it's there, we do get some documentation for what it does. So we're looking for a behavior by name, and the name we're looking for is the executor, which you can see here in the component graph panel is simply enough called executor. So I'll write that there and the program that's executed by the robot is an attribute or property of this object. So I'll say robot program equals robot executor dot program. And now this VC program object has a method for creating new properties which are global variables in the main routine and the subroutines. So we'll say prop for property equals robot program dot create property and we first need to pass the type of property we want to create, so let's use VC integer. And we then want to pass a name for the property, so I'll call this counter. And I will make the script editor a bit bigger for you. And since we're not worried about any grouping, you can just you know give the name you want for the property and reference it this way in your program. So you're creating something called counter, and that's what I can reference in the robot program. Now, one thing to remember, if you're using a script or API to create a new property, you do need to pass the constraints for that property when you create it, or the time you're initializing it. So you could do that here, but I won't worry about that. You can, of course, use the GUI to add a property. And then if I select one here and go to the property task pane, you can, of course, edit its constraints. So there's not much constraints for a Boolean property. There's actually none, but if I was to add a string property. You can see you have constraints down here. So you can edit them at any time using the GUI, but if you're creating the property in a script or in your own add-on, you know you do have to define the constraints at the time of the call. Let's close that out and go back to our script. And if I now compile the code, we didn't get any error message in the output panel, so everything looks good. I will exit out of the editor. I'll then go to the program tab. And if I select the main routine, we can see it already has a counter variable, but this is a routine variable. So I can delete this. Then we can delete this statement here. Or actually, let's edit it. 
to assign a value to that counter property we added to the robot program. So if I go to the statement properties panel, the target property is called counter, and we want it to be zero. So we're going to do what we did at the beginning of the video. Let's now create a while loop and make its condition. As long as counter is less than five, let's make a delay of two seconds. And make sure that delay is in the while loop, so I'll drag and drop it. Then after the delay, let's increment the value of the counter property. So I'll use counter plus one for my expression. And if I run this simulation, we probably won't see anything happen because it's not a routine variable. So let's actually, instead of using a while loop, I'm sorry, let's actually make an if statement. So let's say that after we do the delay and increment the value of counter, let's add an if statement. And for its condition, if counter modello divided by two is equal to zero, so if the value of counter is even, then we'll move the robot over here. So I'll add a point-to-point -point motion statement to the then scope. Else, let's not do anything. So if I reset the simulation and run it, let's see what happens. So counter eventually becomes even, and the robot will stay there because I didn't tell it to go anywhere else. So let's make that a bit better. Sorry about that. So if it's odd, let's go this direction and add that to your L scope. There we go. So if it's even, the value of the variable, it will go to position one. If it's odd, it will go to position two. So if I reset, run the simulation, counter variable is first one, then it's two. It should be three now, so it goes there, four, and five, I'm dancing with the robot. <laughs> All right. Okay, this completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And I hope you have a wonderful day.